do highly recommend watching her live performance from the Eras tour. Watch her documentaries next. Watch the video for Look What You Made Me Do. This was so fun to watch. Wow, I want more. Please react to her music videos. Those were some of the responses from my Taylor Swift video, and I'm not gonna lie, it was a little overwhelming, but sometimes in life, you gotta give the people what they want. Emphasis on sometimes. But this is why I'm gonna watch every single Taylor Swift music video and concert movie or documentary. I will say that overall, most of the Swifties that came through and left a comment, they were nice. And will this challenge push my meter closer to the Swiftie side? I don't know, but I guess we'll see. I decided to wait this long to do this challenge in response to my other video because it was kind of fitting that the Eras tour was being released on Disney Plus. So I was like, why not do it? And like I said, that's what the people wanted. But the only rule I have with this is I have to watch each era in order and video release order. But I do want to point out that there's going to be some exceptions. Like for example, the All Too Well short film came out in 2021 and that's on Taylor's version of the album Red. But I'm going to do the Red OG album release date. So that's 2012. So I'm gonna throw it in with the 2012 crew. In total, here is everything that I plan on watching and I'm sure that I'm probably missing a few, but I got the main ones. Of those videos, movies and documentaries, your girl, Taylor Swift, she directed like 19 of them, which I think is pretty cool. Now I probably missed a couple because she technically produced on some of them only, but it's it's still cool either way. But throughout this video, if you see the taco emoji next to a song title or a movie title, then you'll know that she either co-directed or directed that specific thing. One thing I didn't do before was look at the lyrics of her songs. It's one thing to just like listen to them, but as I watch the music videos, I'll have the lyrics pulled up too. Unless I know the song word for word, which by now it could be the case for some of them. And for each album or era, I'll list out my favorite music video because as someone that also likes to make videos, I think it'd be cool to see the creative ideas or even the style of creativity change from a video that was created almost 20 years ago to now. And we're off. I started this by watching some videos during my lunch break at work and then whatever I didn't finish, I just watched the rest at my desk at home. Out of all of those, I gotta give the number one spot to Teardrops followed by Tim McGraw and then Picture to Burn. Mainly because with Teardrops, I knew it was gonna happen, but when Drew walked by her, I was like, ah, come on, Drew. And then in Tim McGraw, she left homeboy with a letter that basically said, sucks to suck. And then during Picture to Burn, I was like, dang, what this man do? <laughs> the only other things I'll say about the other videos is in I'm Only Me made sense because it's just videos of her being herself. And in the should have said no video, I was like, let me get a hoodie like that. But I, I will say I was laughing at how the guys like awkwardly danced or whatever and took the hoodie off. I, I don't know, I just thought it was funny. Let me also just remind you that these are my opinions. While I know that some of her videos are labeled as iconic, these are just my opinions on which videos I particularly like. It's time to do some laundry. To rank the videos during this era, I would start off with the best day. And I would say both of them then White Horse, and then You Belong With Me. The best day just made me think like, man, I love my family, and I, I wanna talk to my mom, my dad, just everybody. White Horse reminded me of sometimes why I appreciate music videos, because they always add that like extra dialogue that you can't get with just listening to the song. So with that video, I was like, they had me in the first half, I'm not gonna lie, but then it obviously finished the scene at the end of the video. You Belong With Me could be labeled iconic by some, but to me, it was like a lot of the memes came from that video. I will say though that in the Fearless video, this scene right here, where the guy, one guy like hugs Taylor Swift and then the, he high fives his friend. It reminded me of one of my old friend's videos of his interaction with Taylor Swift. Welcome to the library. I'm a, I am actually here to get a book, but I'm gonna take some time and sit and watch all of the Fearless music videos. There's actually a lot of people here. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm actually not getting this book. Now you can call this a side quest to this challenge, but I tried to check out some books to learn more about Taylor Swift, but every single book that I looked at was either at a different library or not available. So I just went and found myself a desk and just sat there and watched all the videos. Number one, we got I Can See You. Then we got the story of us and then mean. With mean, visually, it was just something that was different. Like you could tell it was on a set. And as I saw later on in the Sparks Fly video, it was something that could be replicated on a tour stage. But I will say it did have the typical storyline of like, you make fun of me now, but you just wait and see and I'll be doing all the good things and you'll be just chilling, doing nothing. The story of us visually, it was great. It was a change of pace as far as like more camera movement, more cuts and stuff like that. Even the music was a little bit more upbeat. <laughs> and again, we had a musician that was just like in a groove. I Can See You is probably my favorite because it's more of a recent video. That means it's more modern kind of whatever. It also has some action in it, but here are my thoughts as I was watching it. Oh, I get it. They're breaking in and freeing Taylor Swift. Wait, I feel like I know who that is. 
I'm assuming these are dresses from the Speak Now era. Yo, is that Taylor Lautner? I knew they dated back in the day, but I hadn't seen that man in a while. That's the girl from Bullet Train. That's right. Now I got through all those. I can go watch the Speak Now World Tour live. Um, I just realized I don't know how I'm going to watch these. Like, I didn't think about this. Like, I knew the Eras tour was on Disney+, Plus, but I have no idea how I'm going to watch the other ones. Basically, after a quick Google search, I pretty much figured out that there was no way to find some of these videos that I needed to watch. But I searched again, and the people of the internet came in clutch. So there will be links to all the different concert tour videos in the description below, except for the ones that are already on Disney+. Plus. So I sat back and watched the entire video. And apparently, I moved my feet a lot while I'm just sitting there. <laughs> I work out. I don't know what's worse. The fact that I have to run six miles or the fact that I'm choosing to do it on a treadmill. I mean, they call it a treadmill for a reason. Or the fact that I'm going to try to watch this all too well short film while running on a treadmill. Or, I mean, it could be all three of them put together. It's just not a good scenario. Two miles into lap. Previous mile in nine minutes, 13 seconds. My top three videos in the red era are we are never ever getting back together. Everything has changed and 22. With 22, I feel like the video matched the lyrics, which I know that's what music videos are for, but I felt like it matched like the, the fact that 22 is supposed to be a good period of your life. Everything has changed was kind of cool. It was just very simple and the simplicity of just being kids and in love. And then obviously, you know, the kids are where well, they look like Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift, but still the, the process, the idea behind that video, I thought it was kind of cool. And then I have, we are never ever getting back together as number one because that video seemed to be shot in one take. And I, I just enjoy those videos because I know that it took a lot of planning, a lot of choreography that went into it. And so I just appreciate that, that art form. And I don't care who you are, like seeing those in music videos or movies or whatever else, I just think that is really cool. I feel like the All Too Well short film receives its own place because it's not necessarily a music video, but it's also not like a concert video or anything like that. Definitely closer to a music video. But overall, I'll say that I liked it, especially that entire scene where they're like arguing in the kitchen or whatever. It reminded me of a song called Voices by a band named Sailson. And the chorus of that song says, we speak in different voices when fighting with the ones that we love. The song is pretty old. And I think that is a phrase that will always have weight because whenever we emotions are tense, we tend to say the things we don't really mean to say. So it's a good thing to always try, always try to think before you speak, especially if your emotions are up there. Anyway, I thought the entire thing was solid. So. I enjoyed it. Also, I may try to watch more TV shows and movies while running on a treadmill to make it more bearable. But the only thing is I got to find like a different placement because looking down at a phone or a tablet or whatever, it's, it's not good for your posture, I'm sure. The running form was terrible. Like watching a sports show versus an actual TV show or a movie, it's different. So obviously as time goes on, so does the advancement of technology and maybe the budget gets a little bit bigger because the videos in 1989 compared to the rest of them are like way up here. <laughs> it was actually a little tough to choose, but I'd say that my top three videos were Bad Blood, Out of the Woods, and Shake It Off. Bad Blood, I just felt like went all in on the graphics and the features, and considering what it was initially about, that kind of makes sense. And I also think it was just way different than her other videos visually. Out of the Woods was just a cool concept overall with the different scenes and whatnot. And Shake It Off, honestly, that video just seemed like it was fun to film, especially considering that there were like eight other videos that had nothing but outtakes. And because this was arguably her transition album to pop, it also prepared me for the 1989 World Tour Live, uh, whatever the name is. And honestly, I watched most of this while I was sitting at my desk working on a bunch of boring stuff. And I actually learned so much about her and enjoyed the entire video. And one thing I love about live shows is that they're always like different than what the album is. Like the artist might do a song differently, but then sometimes there's also like random guests. But I'm not gonna lie, when I saw Kobe, it hit me right here in the heart. But if you were at her concert or if you've been to her concert, what was the random guest? Or if you could think of a random guest that would be perfect for her concert, who would it be for you? My only other thought while watching this entire thing was, yo, are they wearing Heelys? Big reputation. I present to you the best way to enhance your music video watching experience. Because there were only like four videos during this era that I really only had to leave one out. So my personal top three videos were Look What You Made Me Do, Delicate, then Ready For It. So after initially watching the video for Look What You Made Me Do, I feel like I have an initial like understanding of what everything was. But to make the people happy, I went further and watched like a breakdown video couple of them actually, but I want to give a special shout out to Miss Mojo. I feel like Delicate was just like a small glimpse of what stardom is and just not 
being able to be yourself and always having like put up a front basically, which is kind of sad if you think about it, because we as people, we know that, but it's still expected for people to act a certain way because of, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Ready For It gave me like District 9 meets Tron meets dystopia meets sci-fi kind of vibes. And Endgame was just kind of there. Like it was, there was nothing special about it. I'm sure there is, like there was a random cat and I know there's probably so many Easter eggs in each of Taylor's videos, if not all of them, but I ain't gonna lie, I ain't, I ain't got time for that. I can't remember who, but I'm pretty sure someone on the last video made a comment about how I would, how much I would enjoy the performance where I did something bad and uh, they were not wrong. As I was watching the Reputation Tour video, I'm butchering these names like crazy. I enjoyed like a lot of the performances, like Don't Blame Me, I have a new respect for that song. I actually liked that song a lot more than I did at first. Overall, I thought it was good. I thought it was better than the 1989 World Tour, but I guess that was expected, unless you just don't like Reputation. All right, let's talk about the Lover videos. We Need to Calm Down was number one, followed by The Man and then Lover. I really enjoyed the way You Need to Calm Down was filmed, lots of colors, and last but not least, burgers and fries. <laughs> During The Man, I was like, ooh, Tay-Tay pulled a Medea on us. Um, I'll never call her Tay-Tay again, I'm sorry. Outside of the meaning and the purpose of the video, could you like imagine if you started your day every single day, like having a crowd just hype you up for whatever you're about to conquer or whatever adversity you're about to face? It is. I think it would be cool. For Lover, I just like the whole concept of like the dollhouse thing and how each room and color represented some kind of emotion or stage in a relationship or something like that. And I, I'm not gonna lie, for some reason, as I was watching the video for me, I didn't, I just realized I didn't really like the song as much as I thought I did. And later on, I don't know if I was like mentally exhausted just from all the Taylor Swift stuff, but the City of Lover video was just like meh to me. But Miss Americana though, that was a different story. So when I started watching Miss Americana, I had a lot of like, aha moments. Like that's why this is this way and that's why she did this. And oh, her friend's name is Abigail and like other stuff too. Like I knew about the political side of her, but I didn't know about like the assault trial or anything like that. I don't know what I, where I was or what I was doing. I was like living under a rock or something like that. I really don't know how I missed that. Now I understand like why she embraced like the snake image during the reputation era. And I just like how she was just being real about how what she thinks of like the beauty standard for women these days and how they have to like reinvent themselves just to stay relevant. To me, watching the documentary was like watching an artist find success, but she was trapped in this box seeking approval from strangers. Then once she broke out of that, she was able to handle the adversity that she later faced and truly express herself. This next section may seem rushed, but this was 2020. So there was only one video for Folklore and Evermore and then four for Midnight. So I'll go ahead and say that. Yeah, I like how the video for Willow was a continuation of Cardigan. However, for some reason, I wasn't really looking forward to watching the Long Pond Studio sessions, which I don't know why, because I just enjoyed the overall chill vibe. Like I already liked the song, The One, but like watching it on this video, it made me like it even more. And the same thing goes for the song Ricochet and, and there's others too, but those two just stuck out to me. And for Midnight's, I had to arrange it like this. Anti-hero, Bejeweled, then Karma. And they were all interesting in their own way. Like we had anti-heroes, different versions of Taylor Swift. Bejeweled was, you know, the classic Cinderella story. And I also like how Jack was in that video. And Karma, I ain't gonna lie. At first I felt like I was like borderline tripping, but then for some reason I really like the Taylor Mountain or whatever you want to call it. It, may, it actually reminded me of Moana. And then it was time for the main event, so I grabbed a cinnamon roll and began the Eras tour. But then, of course, life hit me. Hello from the hotel room. <laughs> now, out of all her eras, I didn't really have like a favorite one that she performed during this film. But rather, I had songs that I thought were performed really well, like You Need to Calm Down, Cardigan, Bad Blood, and Karma. The list is pretty long, even though overall the entire Eras tour film was good. When the Reputation era was about to begin, I was like, hey, yo, that's a snake. And the snake appeared before it actually said anything on the screen. It made me think like that, I was able to see that because of an aerial view and because I'm watching a video that was created, edited, all that kind of stuff. But that like the difference between watching something and then being there in person, I feel like there's pros and cons to both. Cause like if you were there and you're sitting on the floor seats or whatever, Yes, you're closer to the artist, in this case, it's Taylor Swift, but you wouldn't be able to see like all the visuals on the stage or anything like that. But if you were like way up, I personally would call those seats the like, I just wanted to say that I was there kind of seats because you're, you're really far. And I, I understand that you're surrounded by people that have the same passion as you. 
I get that. But to me, that middle area is where like the best of both worlds. Like you're not as close, but you're not too high and you can see all the visuals and everything just fine. But let's be honest, I know that some of y'all went to the live show and now you have the Eras tour just on repeat, just playing over and over again. I also want to point out that this video was made before her new album, The Tortured Poets Department came out. So any music video that she may release in the future after that album is released, it's not gonna be in this video. Now, I know for a fact that I probably missed some interpretations or some meanings behind the songs and the music videos, but I'm sure that you'll let me know in the comments if you haven't already. But I wish more artists had like more documentaries or concert films, because I feel like that helps the artists connect to their fan base a little bit better. Because by far the Folklore Pond session was my favorite as far as like understanding the songs and knowing where they come from in her mind or stuff like that. And Miss Americana, even though it was the only documentary I watched, I felt like it was a really good insight to see how she was, who she was as a person. As far as my favorite music video, I gotta give it to You Need to Calm Down. I don't know why I like the way it was filmed and whatnot, and, and the Eras tour was obviously the best concert film, but I would give the Reputation tour some credit. My favorite song performed was Don't Blame Me, although I have been wondering how she feels performing songs like Bad Blood now, knowing that that issue is more or less resolved. Because last time I checked her and Katy Perry were on good terms, and Katy Perry even went to one of her Eras tour concerts, so I don't know. So this brings up the same questions that I have to ask myself. Do you consider yourself a Swifty? I would say I'm leaning more than 50%, like I said in my last video, like 50.5. No, I'm just kidding. It would be like 65-ish percent, maybe closer to 70. And I'm sure if you haven't thought of this already, you're probably like, oh, he's becoming a Swifty right before our eyes. Look at him grow. Would I see her perform live? I would say yes, because I appreciate all that goes into a concert, not just her concerts, but anybody's concert. Um, everything behind it. And I mean, now I know her songs and <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be sitting singing every single word to every song because I ain't on that level yet. And I don't know if I'll ever be on that level. I think overall in the spirit of giving people a chance, I think it's also important to dive a little bit deeper to understand why people sing certain songs or have certain lyrics or say the things that they say. I guess like if, when you're in a heated discussion, like the all too well cut scene, or if you're just having a normal conversation, try to think about why people are saying what they're saying or where they're coming from before we just lash out on each other. Yeah. Sunday morning views quickly turns to afternoons. It's like that I can barely go and catch it. Kinda how I feel with you. Cause your Sunday morning views quickly turn my whole